Hey everyone, it's Kayla, and for today's Camp NaNoWriMo vlog, My Little Ginger Doodles is doing a writing habits tag. The tag was created by Dream the Impossible Dream. I will leave her video below along with her channel link. Go check her out. And I was actually tagged to do this about a year ago by a lady herself who's currently redoing the tag, which I think is really cool. Um, I will leave her information below, obviously, as well as Kenya's, because the three of us are hashtag my little ginger doodles. Before I start doing the tag questions, I just wanted to announce that we are doing a Q&A. Uh, my little ginger doodles is doing a Q&A. So comment below, ask any questions you want relating to writing, what we're working on, anything like that. You can comment on Lainey's video or Kenya's video or obviously myself, and we will be sure to answer them in a video at the end of the month. And we're very excited to be doing a Q&A for you guys. I personally love Q&As because the questions you guys come up with sometimes are so challenging and they make you think and I just can't wait to see what everyone comments. So yeah, be sure to comment below with a question and we will answer them at the end of the month. Now on to the tag questions. The first question is typed or handwritten? I personally like to type out my rough draft. However, if I'm working on like names or character ideas or plot ideas or things like that, I have a little notebook that I keep. But when I'm drafting, when I'm actually writing something, I prefer type because I can type a lot faster than I can write and get my thoughts out quicker. So yes, definitely typed. Number two is cursive or printed. And I actually have a mix of both. My handwriting is a little bit sloppy and the fact that all my letters kind of connect together, but they're not technically cursive. Most of my letters get strung together, especially like my T's and L's and E's. So yeah, I'm kind of sloppy when it comes to handwriting. I can make it look really nice or really bad, really bad. Number three, show us your favorite pen. I have a pen problem. I collect hundreds of them. When it's back to school specials in August, you know I'll be hitting up Walmart. Mm -hmm, for more. These are kind of expensive, but they are my favorite. It's Bic 730R, and this is the point. That's what it looks like, and I love how smooth these write. I like that they don't bleed through. I love, love, love needlepoint fine tip pens like this. Because of my handwriting and the way it kind of flows together, I love pens like this because I can just go, and they're hell of expensive. I think, like, at Staples, it's like four for ten, but YOLO, guys, YOLO. I love these pens, okay? Okay. And I also like the Pilot G2 pens. They're kind of like gel pens, I guess, but they write really smoothly. Anything that writes really smoothly, I love. Number four, where do you like to write? I like to write anywhere, anywhere that I'm inspired. Most of my writing I actually get done at work during my downtime because when I'm home, I kind of feel more distracted by, you know, TV and family and things like that. If I'm outside my house, I'll write more. I know that's weird, but it's just the way it is. Number five, who are your favorite authors in terms of authorial style or writing style? I have a bunch of different favorite authors for writing styles, but I picked a bunch of books off the shelf just to talk about some of them. I can make a separate video about that if you guys would like to see that. I really like Cassandra Clare's writing because she writes in a lot of different perspectives, and I really feel like I'm reading different voices when I'm reading her characters. And I think she's very good at different POVs and getting inside your head and creating unique voices for each of her characters. Like I'm not confused. I never get confused about whose point of view I'm reading, unlike other books. Hashtag Allegiant. I would also definitely say Lainey Taylor. She wrote the Daughter of Spoken Bone trilogy and she is just such a beautiful writer. Her writing is so exquisite and so descriptive and her writing almost makes you want to cry because of how beautiful it is. I'm just being honest here. And I also pulled off my shelf The Kite Runner by Colette Hassini. I love the way Colette Hassini writes. I feel like it's so poetic in a way and it just conveys such emotion and garners such a reaction from the readers and I really really appreciate that a lot. His books are just breathtaking and eye-opening and he really conveys that through his writing style. And the last book I picked off my shelf was The Girl of Fire and Thorns by Ray Carson. Y'all know how much I love this series. I can't say enough about it. And as I read this book the first time, I really felt like I was immersed in the story, like I was a spectator watching it happen in the present tense because of how present her writing seems. I can't explain it, but she definitely writes in present tense. It makes you feel like you're there watching it happen as it happens, and I really, really enjoyed that a lot. I definitely have more adult authors that I admire, and I really, really want to make a separate video of this now that 
I'm talking about it. So I will definitely do that in the future. I'll write it down in Evernote, which is the life-saving app of all time. Just saying. Question six is, what are three of your favorite books on writing? Well, definitely that would be The Bible, <laughs> The Elements of Style by Strunk and White. I had to buy this for a college class that I had to take. This book, as thin as it is, this was the book that really sharpened my writing and made it clear and concise and not wordy. It is a lifesaver to have when you're editing and you need to consult something. This is my go-to. Highly, highly recommend it. I think it's less than $10 on Amazon. If you're into writing, you should have this on your shelf for sure. I also loved On Writing, A Memoir of the Craft by Stephen King. Stephen King is the king, let's be honest here. I mean, I go to Barnes & Noble and I see three or four shelves filled with his books. He knows what he's talking about. And this book was like half autobiography and half writing advice, and it was just fantastic. And it's just so interesting to read his story and also read his advice, so I highly recommend this as well. And last summer, I picked up Wonder Book, which is a fully illustrated encyclopedia to world building and fantasy writing, and I freaking love it so much. So unique. And if you're into fantasy at all, even if you just like to read it and you don't want to write it, just get this book because it's really awesome. And currently this month I am reading Zen and the Art of Writing by Ray Bradbury. I believe these are just essays that are supposed to inspire you and motivate you to write and become obsessed with writing and love what you're doing. And I think that's really awesome and sometimes I really need to have that in my life, you know? So I heard really good things about this. So definitely I'll be reading this this month for NaNoWriMo. And I also just picked up No Plot, No Problem by Chris Batty. Beatty, Batty. He is the founder of NaNoWriMo and he wrote this book. It's been edited over and over again and I'm really enjoying this a lot. A lot of it really hits home for me because that's what I struggle with the most, not having a plot. And the stuff that he says, I'm like, oh my god, that is exactly how I feel. That is exactly how I think. So I highly recommend this if you're into writing at all, not just writing in a month, but into writing. It reads more like a field guide. There's advice from other NaNoWriMo winners and things like that and I just really recommend this book. It's really great so far. Number seven is have you ever competed in NaNoWriMo before? And yes, this is my third attempt I believe and hopefully not my third failure. Number eight is have you ever won NaNoWriMo so far? Nope. Number nine, have you ever had anything published? Back in like ninth grade I wrote for Voices which was like this segment of our local newspaper written by teens for teens, and I wrote a couple articles for that. Number 10, what are you currently working on? I am currently working on a post-apocalyptic fantasy set years in the future after Earth is just destroyed by this massive weather system named Titan, and I've decided to throw in a bit of mythology into that as well, so I'm really excited about where that's going. I also have ideas for a female Dragon Knight trilogy. I have ideas for a standalone middle grade adventure about a library scavenger hunt where you can actually go into books and I think that'd be amazing. <laughs> I also have ideas for a new adult or adult contemporary about a bigger girl and it's kind of like a rom-com but with a bigger girl because I feel like there's nothing out there like that. If there is there's like a couple books like that. I feel like there should be more books where they focus on plus-sized females but that's another topic of conversation. Oh, and I also have an idea for an Atlantis duology, and I really, really want to work on that because I feel like there's no books set in Atlantis or about Atlantis, really. Nope. Also have an idea for a YA Trojan war romance, but yeah, yeah, I have story ADD. It's a problem. Number 11, what is your soundtrack to writing? And I love to listen to movie scores. The Lord of the Rings movie scores are on my iTunes. Harry Potter, of course, is on my iTunes. Titanic, Gladiator, all the epic movies on my iTunes. I love to listen to scores so much. And oh my god, the Interstellar score is fantabulous. I'm just saying. Number 12, do you have a writing pump-up song? And not really. I don't really have something that gets me in the mood to write. However, um, I do have like a pump up song when I'm getting ready or putting makeup on. I love listening to the Glee version of Pump and Blood, and it's originally by the No No No's, I believe, but I will leave the Glee version down below. I just love Leah Michelle, and I just love that song so much, and it just makes me want to get up and dance and be happy. All right, guys, that's it for the tag. Don't forget to comment below and ask us a question, and we'll be sure to answer it in our answers video at the end of the month, and I will see you all soon with another video. Bye!